Hey, I'm Kenneth Wedgda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly photo talk, photo gear, real experience talks. So today I want to talk about, and before we do, let's quick mention, this show is possible because of your contributions and support. And with times being tough, I could really use some patrons to help keep the lights on and keep the shows going. I'm trying to do more shows. The last few months you may have noticed I do three a week. I have time because there aren't as many freelance gigs because so many conferences and conventions are canceled. So if you're able to support, please do. If you have a job that didn't put you back, maybe you can help this show a little bit and help me out. So today I'm going to talk about the Hasselblad. So this is a Hasselblad 5C, 500C. It's actually a CM. The end of the 500Cs, they ended up not changing the name on, but if they had a removable prism, a removable ground glass, then it was one that was actually a CM. That's the only difference between the C and the CM is the CM had a ground glass you could change out yourself, whereas the C did not. And this has a waist level viewfinder, my preference for shooting a Hasselblad. These are great cameras. But to me, they're fiddly. To me, you have to make sure that the back and the magazine is loaded and in sync with the body. You have to make sure the lens is mounted when it's in the right position with the lens cocked, because the shutter is in the lens. You have to make sure that everything is working and communicating. They give you a couple of white dots on the side to let you know that the body is in the proper position, the film back is in the proper position. Everything works great. But I find that I can load a Rolleiflex and be out the door much quicker. This is a studio camera for me. I've shot portraits of people in their homes with lighting. I've shot portraits here with it. But I wouldn't choose this over a Rolleiflex if you're going to only use it with the 80 millimeter lens, especially because it's a lot heavier. People say, oh, I like to be able to change film mid raw, but that Hasselblad, because it has film backs and a dark side, you can do that. But I tend to not shoot that much film that quickly. I tend to mostly shoot black and white HP5 in these because I'm going to process it myself. And if I'm doing that, I don't need to have two backs with different kinds of film loaded. I don't even need to have two backs, frankly. I'm not in that big of a hurry that a person who I'm making a portrait for, if I wanted to shoot another raw film, couldn't wait while I reload the film magazine. It doesn't take that long. But even that, it has a few little tricks about how you do it. There's a little lever that has to have, make sure that the film is thread underneath this one little lip when you're loading the film magazines. You have to know some of the older ones have a little peephole that you have to look through on the back to see a red window to find out where the arrows are. So when you find out you're at number one, you're ready to, you know, advance the film to. The whole point of it is this is a great system camera and I do enjoy using it. The viewfinder is super bright. It's got an 80 millimeter planar lens. It's beautiful. And the results I've gotten with it are phenomenal. Do I recommend it? Yes. Do I recommend it over a Rolleiflex? Not for me. The Rolleiflex, I can work all day long. If I'm shooting waist level, both have the pop-up uh, magnifier, but this is heavier. And this one has, I think they wanted you to use your left hand to fire the shutter, and it's not as intuitive to me as how the Rolleiflex is. The Rolleiflex also helps me meet people because when I take the Rolleiflex out into the street, people come up and talk, hey, what is that? Whereas this they may, but they don't do it as much. So if I had to say between the two, I would say highly recommend it if you change film a lot. But it's fiddly. And maybe some of you will disagree with me and say you can make it work without all the fiddling. But I find it to be, if I am going to go shoot a portrait now, if I'm going to use this camera, I need to go set the magazine down. I need to carefully load the magazine. I need to make sure it's all aligned and talking to the camera body. It's not quick. When it comes to it, the Rolleiflex would be my go-to for that 80 millimeter lens. Now, if you're going to go with a wide angle or a telephoto, sure, this has 
more ability without having to buy separate Roloflex Wides and Roloflex Tellies, which are super expensive. And the other thing is you can also get into a Mamiya TLR, like a C330, and that also comes with Wides and Telephotos. So this one, if you're really into changing film backs and using a lot of different kinds of film on the same shoot, this would come in handy. I don't do it like that. So I would say it's not my way. The felt, the, the, even the straps are proprietary. You have to have the proprietary click to make it work. So everything about Hasselblad is beautifully made. It's all mechanical, no batteries. I like that. But nothing about it is super quick. Everything is kind of tailored to a system. And you have to use it probably every day to get fast at it. And I don't use it that often. I use it occasionally for portraits. So that's the Hasselblad 500C, which is really a CM. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support, please do hit the Patreon. I'll be back next week. We'll talk photography. As always, here's to good light.